So I spent the last four days researching low-level laser therapy caps and combs. And in this video, I'm going to reveal everything that I discovered, including the very sneaky tactics these companies use to make millions and millions of dollars. And of course, I'm going to reveal the best laser hair combs and laser hair caps that you should buy that will hopefully give you the best results. But let's go. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you come to Google and you type um, hair laser cap, there's loads of different types that come up. I mean, there's just uh, five different ones here. Um, there's there's loads of them on uh, Amazon. So let's have a look at the, one of the ones on Amazon. And when you go on Amazon, again, there's loads of them there. So let me just choose one. So here we go. Let's have a look at one of the brands in detail. So this one is called Color Genius Hair Growth Laser 180 Helmet. Um, it's 449 pounds, so fairly expensive. Um, it's got decent average ratings on um, on Amazon, and the key thing is, I want you to see is um, here they say is approved by the FDA. Some of them say cleared by the FDA. Now people think that's the same. It's definitely not the same, and I'll show you that in a minute. And the other thing I want to show you is there's another claim here, clinically proven. Now, what does that mean exactly? Can they claim this is clinically proven? We'll explain all that in a minute. So these are the two, the two key things I want you to keep in mind going forward. Now, let's give you some facts about la laser, ha laser hair caps or hair laser caps and combs. They are all medical devices. So in the UK, Canada, um, most Western countries, the US, these count as medical devices. And of course, that means they require government clearance or approval. And clearance and approval are not the same. We'll explain that in a minute. In the US, the FDA is responsible. So anyone who wants to put a laser cap on the market, they have to kind of get permission from the FDA. And of course, it goes without saying that it's illegal to sell or market a medical device without approval or clearance. So let's explain this approved device process because a lot of these laser caps are claiming to be approved. But what does that exactly mean? So usually, Approved is reserved for class 3 devices. So devices in the eyes of the FDA, the regulators, the government come in three, three classes. Uh, class 1, class 2, class 3. So class 3 is the most serious devices. These are things like heart pacemakers and dialysis machines. Really, really serious machines that you really want to be checked properly. And of course the approval, the approval process for these devices is very long, very rigorous. They require good evidence. The company has to supply data, safety data, efficacy data, studies. It takes weeks, if not months, and it's a very, very tough process. But you might have noticed some of the laser caps say cleared, and people think that cleared is the same as approved. Cleared is nothing like approved. Cleared is the easy route. So the FDA have given this route, which is usually reserved for class one devices. Class one devices are really simple devices that don't really put people's um, health in danger if they go wrong. Um, things like tongue depressors, um, that piece of wood that when you go to the doctors, they push your tongue down with. That's technically a device, even though you might think it's just a piece of wood. Laser caps are also device one, sorry, class one devices. And to get this cleared, all you have to do, and this is unbelievable, all you have to do is submit some paperwork. Um, I think it's called the 510K submission or form. There's no need to provide clinical trials, no data. And you might be thinking, how do they do this? How is this even possible? It's a very, very simple loophole that allows them to get this clearance very easily. And I'm just going to try and explain it now in simple terms. It's a simple loophole and it, it's, it's crazy. Let me just explain it to you. But so there's a little rule with the FDA that you can have your device, any device cleared if you can prove that your device is very, very similar to an existing device that they've already approved. For example, if me and you make a laser hair cap, we just get a cap and we stuck with, you know, we stick some laser nodes in it and we go to the FDA and we say, listen, you've approved a device just like ours in the past that has that is in the shape of a cap that has lasers and we want you to approve ours because it works in the same way we're going to use it for the same thing as in you know hair regrowth and the fda says no problem fill in this uh, 510 submission form and give it to us give us three months 
and hey presto we have a fully legal marketed laser hair cap that we can brand and sell ourselves and make millions it's that simple it's called the rule of equivalence if you can prove your device is equivalent to one that they've already approved you're good to go now what about claims of clinically proven because as we saw in um, my example let's have a look again quite a lot of them claim to be clinically proven as you can see here you see that quite a lot so the question is since most of these laser caps are cleared can they claim to be clinically proven because remember they're not approved they, they, they are you know they're only cleared so can they claim to be clinically proven the answer came in 2017 in a case involving a brand called Capillus and I'm going to explain the case now. So let me explain this complaint that happened back in 2017 because I think you're going to like it. What happened was a company called Capillus uh, launched one of their many laser hair caps. Uh, I think it was called the Capillus Pro or i82 or something. But they were a little bit cheeky because they've plastered adverts everywhere claiming that their product was clinically proven. The trouble was their product was only cleared. It was not approved, it was only cleared. And we explained the difference between the two terms already. Unlucky for them, some eagle-eyed person spotted this and complained. They complained to the advertising authorities and the advertising authorities looked at the case and unbelievably, even though the FDA cleared this particular product, they upheld the complaint and they told the company to take down the advert because in their eyes, the product could not say that it was clinically proven. So what does it show us? It shows us that the term cleared really means very, very little. It just means that the FDA have seen your paperwork. That's it. So let me give you an idea about the way I was um, researching this. This is something that you can try and do yourself, even though it's quite technical, um, it's something that you can do. So this is the brand Capillus Ultra I picked at random. And uh, I just want to show how you can check this, um, you know, whether their claims are correct. So they claim to be FDA cleared. So obviously you need to go to the FDA's database and um, the brand is called Capillus. So you just type the brand name here and um, you press enter. And this brings up all the devices I think this company had um, attempted to get approved or cleared with the FDA. And uh, when you click on a particular device, that gives you an idea, kind of the technical details. And um, for example, this uh, product was called Capillus Pro. It was a class two device, just like we explained the different classes. Um, it gives you the specialty, it gives you the date, and it even gives you a link to the actual submission. And uh, when you click on that, this brings up even more technical details about the, the submission. This is the form I was telling you about, the 510K submission. And um, it gives you the, the reason uh, for the decision, uh, sub substantially equivalent, as we explained a minute ago. So this is where you can go to really get deep technical details about each product with the FDA. So a quick announcement. The people who do the best research end up with the best results. I've been in the industry for more than 10 years and uh, this is something I've noticed. So to help you get the best hair transplant results you can, I've put together a package of information, tips and tricks using my insider knowledge and I've left the links in the description below. So if you're planning a hair transplant, I highly recommend you have a look at this. So the question is which low level laser therapy cap or comb should you buy? I think you should stick purely to things that are marked approved because the term approved gives you confidence that the FDA have actually looked at the data, looked at the studies behind this product and you can have more confidence that it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep looking for uh, devices that are approved and I'm going to leave the link in the description below at some point, probably in a week or two after this video goes out. I have a question for you. Would you use a laser hair cap? Tell me in the comments below. I'm Avi. Take care.